Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm gonna do my August 2021 TBR. So I have filmed this like eight times. <laughs> not going so well. So today I'm trying it after work, which is not my ideal time to film, but this is what you get. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna talk about the books that are possibilities. I have a core, a core TBR and then everything else is just whatever I feel like picking up. So let's just go with that. So I'm participating in two readathons and a couple of buddy reads. So I have quite a few books I want to get to. We'll see how my reading goes. My reading in the last couple months has been very erratic in what I actually read with what I think I'm going to read. So we'll see how this goes. So August is Women in Translation Month. I've taken part in this in the last three years at least. I can't remember if I did it the first year on booktube, but I know that I did the last three. There is a week-long um, readathon put on by um, Cranger Wichester, uh, Matthew Sharapa, and Jennifer at insert literary pun here. Um, it's from the August 14th to the 20th. So I will be reading Women in Translation during that week, but I am not keeping myself to that. I'm taking the whole month to read several uh, different things, I'm hoping. So we'll see. Anyway, so, um, but if you, I'll have one of their announcement videos linked below if you want to see what they're doing for their readathon. Um, I just like longer readathons than a week. A week doesn't do anything for me. I can't do that. It's just the way I read and what I'm usually in the middle of, I, you know, it just doesn't work. So anyway, so the book, the book I'm reading also as a buddy read for Women in Translation Month is out by Natsuo Carino. And this is translated uh, from the Japanese by Steven Snyder, I believe. And I can't find the one page that says it on. Yes, Steven Snyder. So this is, uh, I'm going to be reading, this is a buddy read with Maria at MH Books. So we both figured out that we, <laughs> we've seen this on everybody's TBRs or on their bookshelves, but we can't find anybody who's actually read it. <laughs> so we're going to read it. And so we'll see what happens. Anyway, so if you've read it, let me know what you thought. But this is about, uh, I think, a woman who kills her husband and she, her co-workers get together and help her take care of the body. I'm not quite sure. Are they cover for her or something? I'm not sure. I hear it's brutal. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, a lot of stuff in their past that make, you know, cause they're, it's very traumatic for some of them. I don't know. We'll see what happens anyway. So I've again, had this on my bookshelf for over four years or yeah, now it's been over four years and I really want to get to that. So Maria and I are going to buddy read that in the first week of August. Um, and then the other one that I'd really like to get to this month is for uh, my booktube spin round three uh, roll or spin number two on that one. So what came up from um, Rick um, McDonnell, I'll have him linked as well down below. Um, the booktube spin happens every couple months and he does a spin. Last time he spun twice on round three and I've read the first book. Uh, for Jane Austen July, it happened to be a book for that month. And then the second one was A Woman in Translation, so it gets to be in August. So I'll get my books done, let's hope. Anyway, so this one is by, is Tove DeLevson, and it is translated by um, Tina Nanali and Michael uh, Favala uh, Goldman. So this is a memoir, um, written in three parts. These are three different books that they've combined into this one. So I'm only going to read for sure childhood. I'm not sure I'll read more, but it has to do with, um, I believe, uh, childhood in Copenhagen and being in working class. So I'm not, I really heard good things about the first one at least. I know I saw a couple of reviews when, um, I think last year when it was first translated. I'm not positive, but anyway, I, or newly packaged. Anyway, I saw that in uh, single books and then I've got again the bind up. So anyway, but because this is my booktube spin book, I would like to get the, to that, but I'm committing to at least reading childhood. If I can read the rest of them, that would be great too, but I'm not going to force that all in one month. We'll see what happens, but I want to at least start it. <laughs> um, and then uh, there's are, the rest of these are all my possibilities. I would like to read Tender is the Flesh by Augustina uh, Balsterica. And I, um, I think this is translated from the Spanish by Sarah Moses. So again, I've seen this around the last, uh, I think last year it was pretty popular. It's like a horror novel, but it sounds really cool because it has, well, not cool. <laughs> I don't want to live in this dystopian anyway, um, where something happens where 
we are uh, humans are no longer able to eat animal uh, flesh, you know, so they can't uh, you know have cows and things like that as their meat. So they uh, certain humans are can are are turned made into the meat, and so um, I think this has to do with somebody who has somebody who is considered meat and that's their what something what happens between them i'm not sure but it, i've been wanting to read that for <laughs> since last year so i got that another one i've had uh that i bought i think last year is the last children of tokyo by yoko tawada so this is translated from the japanese by margaret mitsutani so um i don't remember a whole lot about this i just remember loving this cover i don't know uh, it has to do with something about an older generation talking to some kids or I don't know about something that happened. I don't know if there is a disease and they're looking for a cure or some secret societies. I don't know. I don't remember. And when I read the flap, that's about all I get. And I'm like, I don't remember that when I bought this anyway, but I would like to read it because it's pretty short and I've had it on my shelf for at least a year. Um, another, uh, yeah, I have a lot, the rest of these are Japanese lit. Sorry that you should know by now that that is where I tend to gravitate towards. Uh, the Hole by Hiroku. Is that right? Okay. Uh, Oyamata. This is translated by David Boyd uh, for the Japanese. So I read um, her book The Factory last year and found it really interesting. I wasn't sure how I felt about it by the end, but it was an interesting journey. Um, but I pre-ordered this and I don't, I don't usually pre-order um, translated works. I don't know why. I usually wait to hear what other people are saying or wait a little while before I buy them, mostly because I have a lot. I keep looking at my translated books over here. I have two shelfuls of stuff to read. So um, <laughs> I don't know why I did this. this. is like an Alice in Wonderland retelling a woman. Um, her husband gets transferred to the Japanese countryside for work and it's kind of like an Alice in Wonderland kind of story. It's really short. Something about she finds a weird creature and there's a hole that she falls into. I'm not sure what, it, but it just sounded interesting. And I, I've had it since last year when it came out and I haven't read it yet. Another book that's been on my shelf for four years <laughs> that I want to get to is Hiromi Kawakami, um, the Nakano thrift shop. This is translated by Alison Markham Powell. Yes. And, um, I bought this soon after I read Strange Weather in Tokyo. Um, which I found out about here on booktube and then I collected this one at that time and I've just never gotten to it Every women in translation. I have it there in my list, but I never get to it So I'm hoping this time I'm gonna get to it because it is I have come and done my revisits I've noticed that this is still on my shelf. It's one of the oldest of the translated works So I really do that I've owned that I own so I want to get to this and I think this has to do with this thrift shop and the people who work there and their relationships That's about all I know about it um, a book I bought just a couple months ago. I bought the, this one and the, and the next one on a, at a sale at Pal's Bookstore. I went in specifically for this one because it was on sale, and that is Breasts and Eggs uh, by uh, Miiko Kamakami. Yeah, I don't know if I said that right. It's <laughs> just my brain. I can't. Anyway, sorry. Um, so this is translated by Sam Bett and David Boyd, I believe. So. Um, this was really popular last year. A lot of people read it. I really wanted to, but I couldn't, I didn't, I don't like hardbacks. So I wanted the paperback version. Um, and I, at the time I couldn't get it from my library. So, uh, this year I was like, I'm going to get this book at some point and it went on sale. So I got it. So it has to do with, I know three women, two sisters and one of the, one of their daughters. And I think it's like them talking about things that they want out of life or that, that, they feel it that's owed to them or that they think that they don't get because of their women. I'm not sure. So other than that, I just hear this kind of structured weird because I guess it was like a, a novella that got expanded. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that because I mean, it's really a big chunky book and it's started out as a novella. So I'm not sure if I, how I'm going to feel about that, but we'll see. I, a lot of people like it. And then the last one of my women in translation picks is there's no such thing as an easy job by Kikuro. Sumora, and this is translated by Polly Barton. So this one I picked up on a whim on that sale, but it's one I'd kind of seen, but I didn't know anybody. I still don't know anybody's actually read it, <laughs> but this uh, sounds just interesting about a woman. I think she wants to have um, a really easy job. So she 
goes to several different jobs that she gets sent out to. Um, and they're weird jobs. So I just, I think it just sounds kind of weird. And it might be, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be some kind of commentary on, on the workplace or something. Or, you know, how much people dedicate time to their work work lives and stuff. I'm not sure. But it just, I, I was drawn in. I admit it. It just sounded interesting in the weird jobs um, that she gets sent to. So those are all my possibilities. I have a lot more um, translated work, uh, women in translation, that I could pick up. But these are the ones that are calling to me. These are the ones that I'm putting on my possibilities. So the other readathon that I'm participating in is the History Challenge, which is put on by Emma at a Cup of Books, Ghost Reader, Triumphant Reads, and um, Bookish Shenanigans. I think that's what it is. I'll have them, um, I'll have um, Emma from a Cup of Books, her announcement video linked down below. So this is a readathon about reading nonfiction history. So they have like other prompts where you could read some other stuff and uh, give you guidelines. They have a little, you know, there's a bingo card. Um, I'm just looking at doing one because I already have a lot of books from Women in Translation that I want to hit and a couple other things which I'll talk about in a second. So I only want to put one book for sure on here. Maybe I'm hoping to get to two books, but I have plenty of nonfiction um, history on my shelf or as audiobooks that I can totally pick up something else. But the one I'm gonna focus on is The Black Count, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and The Real Count of Monte Cristo by Tom Reese. I, um, this is my booktube spin round two pick <laughs> that I have not uh, gotten to. I've read 10 pages and I plan to read this in June and it just didn't happen. I kind of flamed out of how many books I was reading at the time. So I'm hoping um, to get to this. I just uh, purchased the audiobook with her credit so that I could listen to this uh, in the last half of the month. Sorry, I didn't mention this is taking place between August 16th to the 31st. So um, I'm really excited for this readathon because I liked it last year. And again, I always want to read more than I'll get to, but I definitely want to at least get to this one, which again is talking about Alexander Dumas's um, father and, and then his history and then stuff with Napoleon and stuff. And it's just, I think it's a, a jumping point off of, I want to study more in that time period, but I definitely, Alexander Dumas is one of my favorite authors, um, especially after reading The Count of Monte Cristo this year. This is a book I've been wanting to pick up all year. And since it was my booktube spin book, I need to read it as well. So there's that. Um, and then um, Tia and I will be continuing reading the Kate Daniels series. We've actually decided that we are going to try to read it all <laughs> this year. So we will see how this goes. We're getting together, uh, figuring out how this is all going to work, but, uh, I think she's got the plan in place, but we'll see. Um, so we're going to read, this is book five, I believe will be next month, but I will also be reading two novellas around that one that comes before and one that comes after. I don't remember the name. I think magic tests and... Uh, I can't remember the other one. Anyway, but I'm, I'll have them, they'll have those on ebook. But the main book, or the, the full length book is, book is going to be this one. So, again, we're just continuing in this uh, urban fantasy about an alternate um, Atlanta where there are shifters and vampires of such and a lot of different creatures and things. And the magic comes and goes. So, when the magic is up, all the magic and wizards and things can do magic and stuff. And then when the magic is down, technology will work and it won't work during the magic times. So it's a very, I love the world building here and the characters I'm growing to love because I'm right in the middle of reading the fourth book right now for this month. But we'll be accelerating our uh, reading schedule to try to finish it by the end of the year. We'll see how we do. And then just real quick, I have two... Um, fantasies that I want to try to get to this month. Both of them because I have pre-ordered the second book in the series and these are the first books and I didn't realize I was not going to get to them. So I'd already pre-ordered them and then realized, you know, I haven't even read the first book. So I need to read these uh, <laughs> soon. So Deal, uh, Deal with the Devil by Kit Rocha it came out last year and I pre-ordered that. This is the first book in the... Um, Mercenary Library, Librarians series. So it's like a dystopian urban fantasy, uh, paranormal romance, cross. I'm not quite sure where on the lines it is because I haven't read it yet, so I'll know more. I think it's going to be more dystopian paranormal romance, but we'll see. It has sounds really good with action and stuff. They're mercenaries. 
<laughs> I'm already enjoying uh, with librarians. Anyway, so um, I've read Kit Rocha in the past uh, from some of their more erotic stuff that they self-published, but this is their first traditional uh, series. So the second book comes out, uh, uh, I think it's Dance with the Devil something like that. And it comes out on um, the 31st. <laughs> so I need to read this before then to decide if I really want to buy the second book. We will see. And then the other one I want to try in uh, this month because the book comes, the second book comes out in September is The Black Coast by Mike uh, Brooks. This is um, The God King Chronicles. So this is an epic fantasy where I think two civilizations fight each other all the time and then one time they see the ships coming so they think war is coming but it turns out they're actually refugees. They are being driven from their own home by somebody else who's out to destroy all of them I think. And they have to work together as well as deal with uh, I think living together. I'm not quite sure. That's about all I know about it and I've heard only a little bit about it and I bought it and then I pre-ordered the second one. So I need to read this to see if I want to continue on. So anyway, but, um, so those are all the books I would like to get to. These four are my core, my two, my buddy read of Out and Magic Slays, plus the two novellas you're not gonna see here. Um, the Black Count I want to read for the History Challenge and then um, The Childhood by Tove Devlitson. Um, and out for you know women in translation so anyway and the book and both of these are booktube spins so you know i got stuff to read and i got plenty <laughs> plenty of options that are elsewhere but we'll see how we do so what are you reading for august are you planning a lot of things have are you taking part in either one of these readathons um as i said i'll have them linked down below anyway and i hope you guys are doing well. Let me know if you've read any of these and any of these you think I should pick up sooner rather than later. I would really appreciate it and I will talk to you guys later.